Hi, this is Aaron Perlett for Forbes.com, and I'm joined by Rosanna Fisk, who's the chair and CEO of PRSA. Rosanna, great to meet you and great to speak to you today. Likewise, Aaron. It's such a pleasure to be here. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions about the state of today's public relations industry, as well as things that are going on with PRSA. Uh, the first I want to start with the economy and where it's kind of left the our industry as a whole. The PR space has, has actually done relatively well in 08 and 09, between 3 and 4% growth. How do you think the PR uh, space is going to do moving forward? Well, you know, like you said, we saw incredible growth in 08 and 09 when just about every other aspect of, you know, communications or marketing disciplines were really shrinking. And I think we're really poised to do quite well in, you know, in this year and in the coming years. And I think much of that has to do with uh, digital services and social media. Um, you know, public relations is very well poised to be leading the conversation in social media and, and really to be looking at the different strategies associated with that um, side of communications. And our, our profession is, is really um, probably better equipped than most to be having conversations with different publics. Unfortunately, a couple months ago, you couldn't help but escape the news about Burson Marsteller and Facebook. I'd love to get your take on just the entire event and what it says about our industry. Well, you know, I think I think the burst on Facebook issue really, I have to say, is an anomaly. You know, I, 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 I did read your blog post, and I don't completely agree with it. And from the perspective that, um, you know, I... I don't. I have never actually been in a situation where my ethics were questioned. I couldn't step out of them, and yeah, I couldn't step out of the situation. And I believe if you're worth anything, you know, you've got to be worth your integrity and worth the respect that hopefully you've earned over years of of uh, acting as a communicator or as a spokesperson or whatever your role may have been in public relations. You know, I don't know what happened. I, I wasn't there, and you know, it's hard for us to be able to judge. You know what happened. Happen. I tell you, the results of what happened is what I question, and the actions that were taken as a result of what happened is what I question. And I don't believe that any of us um, in public relations does any of what we do with the onset of, uh, of thinking that we're going to deceive people. As a matter of fact, I think in many ways um, we we are the ones that actually act as the conscience of any organization. So I want to ask you about something else. You know, lately I've been hearing a lot of radio ads about um, some of these new startup online reputation uh, oh, yes. firms like Reputation Defender is the one that I hear most often. In fact, I think I hear them on NPR. But they become kind of a new marketing fad. Um, and... You know, to me, it's like preaching the choir and that I'm a huge believer in the power of SEO and the importance of managing SEO along with what you're doing on the PR front. But that's where I kind of think these, some of these companies end up being a little half pregnant in that, sure, they're using technology to aid SEO, but also part of that is driving down negative content. And to do that, you have to be able to use your PR acumen to create new online posts, online stories that are helping to push that down. So. I'm con I'm curious about what your take uh, is about some of these firms. I think to build any reputation, whether you're an online company or just a regular bricks and mortar company, you have to do so over, over years of doing the right thing. I don't believe that really just maintaining an online reputation or even hiring an online reputation firm is going to keep you away from facing some sort of crisis in the future, I think that what helps you face any kind of crisis is, is really keeping those lines of communications open at all time. You want to make sure that what it is, whatever it is that you're saying, it is something that means something to your company and that it's something that your company can stand behind. Um, no online reputation firm, regardless of how good that firm is, is going to be able to help you if you lie or if you're saying something that's different from what you're practicing in your back office. I want to ask you a little bit about news releases. It's something else that I've, I've okay. kind of, I have vigorously campaigned against what I what I think is kind of the, <laughs> the, the abuse of news releases. And I, I think to a degree, some of that is because, you know, as consultants, we get put, placed in some very difficult situations where we don't want to push back on our clients and say, no, this isn't the right time for a news. Release. I think there's sometimes where they're very valuable documents when you've got 
you know, a new product or an M&A you're announcing or you're making some kind of, of uh, financial announcement. But I'm curious. You what mean you, when there actually is news. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but, so I'm curious what you think about the value of news releases, how they're being used today. I'd love your perspective. You know, I think that news releases today have the wrong uh, term or, or have been deemed the wrong term. You know, in the days when really you would put together a news release and, you know, I, I don't know how old you are, but um, we probably are around the same age. And I have to tell you, just 10, 15 years ago when I would write a news release, there was some newsworthiness behind that news release before I would even, you know, put whatever finger to keyboard, if you will. And now it seems like news release is the catch-all term for anything that is informational. Anything that is sending a piece of information to whatever audience, oh, let's just put that in a news release. Well, that's not really a news release. You know, that may be better served by an email or a memo or you know, or a letter. I mean, I don't know, just a different thing. You know, I am a believer that there is a complete overusage of news releases. I, I do think that there is a place and a time for it, and I do think mm. it's a useful vehicle for that purpose, but for that purpose of conveying news. Otherwise, you really have to look at your toolbox and see which one of all those tools that are so easily accessible to us in public relations will you use. So, you know, and going back to what we were talking about before uh, with uh, search, one, one point of value that an overabundance of news releases may have is actually SEO and that when they get posted online in these places that automatically post them that it, it is great for populating search but beyond that you're absolutely right it's just well, you know let, let me just come back to that because you brought up an excellent point and that's SEO and I have to tell you I think if you are um, as a company or as a communicator if you are using your tools correctly and you really are um, having the best options for your brand online you got to make use of your website. You got to make use of your website in really good ways. And that means actually optimizing that website to the best of its abilities, not just a news release and how it's posted, but rather how the content of whatever it is you're trying to get across to your audiences is reflected on that website. And many times that isn't the case. It's a great point. So let me uh, let me let me get you out of here with one more question. Um, okay. Tell us just a little bit about maybe uh, what some of PRSA's upcoming initiatives, things you guys are, are you know hot on the trail after. Well, we just announced a couple of months ago a brand new initiative that we have started called PR Serving America, and you know for for all of the mistruths we hear about public relations out there, there's a lot of good work being done in public relations. You know, PRSA has 110 chapters across the nation, and I have to tell you, it, regardless of where you go, you know, St. Louis, Miami, New York, Atlanta, um, there's a PRSA chapter doing some good work for the community. So this PR Serving America initiative is really going to recognize the local PR work that's being done. So if, you know, say the Atlanta chapter, um, it's actually called the Georgia chapter, is doing some good work for uh, some public service work for some of its nonprofits, we will recognize that nationally by supporting their effort and giving them even more funds so they can continue to support that public service. And we're going to be doing that across the country. And it's a really, really great and exciting way to, you know, bring some more dollars to, you know, to an effort that really needs it. Um, the other cool thing is that uh, this October we have our international conference. And if you ever wanted to talk to anyone in PR, here you have three to 4,000 public relations people in one city. So that may drive you crazy or it could be a lot of fun. So. Where, is it, where is that going to be this year? The conference is in Orlando, Florida, and it's actually October 15th through the 18th, and uh, it's our international conference. We have people from all over the world and all over the U.S., and our speakers include, uh, you know, the likes of Soledad O'Brien from CNN and Chris Brogan, who um, is a well-known social media strategist, and uh, we have the guy that actually created Animal Kingdom in Disney, uh, as one of our speakers, Jim Brody, and so we're very, very excited about it. A little disappointed that I was not invited to speak, but you know, so it goes. You know, uh -oh. one day, <laughs> one one day. There you go. Well, Rosanna, thank you very much for uh, for speaking with me today in Forbes.com. Uh, I appreciate it, and good luck with PRSA.
Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank Great you. to talk to you.